Greetings everyone, this is Lodric and this is a game war in the Pacific in our match against uh, Dojo. Today we will load the combat turn of uh, 11th December 1941. So in the first two turns, or normally in the first turn, we had the attack on Pearl Harbor and the attack on Manila. Manila was a focus sink the enemy submarine fleet and uh, Pearl Harbor was a focus uh, destroy the enemy battleship fleet. And uh, now we capture already the first bases in Malaya and also the first bases in uh, north and south of Manila. So we bring in our uh, air HQ to have a uh, close range uh, air support. We also start already the invasion of Miri and some other bases or, um, in the west or north of Borneo. And uh, normally also our cruiser and destroyer formations trying to hunt down all the cargo shipping, trying to escape out of Manila, or Philippines, Hong Kong, uh, yeah, that area. And uh, yeah, here we hunt only down some cargo ships, so this is no real, or oh, it's a one side engagement, so it makes no sense to watch this a lot, because we already know that we will win, it's a question only how fast we win. And this looks very pretty. One torpedo is normally, I think, enough. We still had enough time to get uh, nine shells in this cargo ship, but uh, this was a clean, easy victory for us. Here we have some Dutch submarine. No, a Dutch destroyer tried to hunt our Japanese submarine, but uh, looks like. We had a uh, small damage only. This looks like a tanker. Yeah. So nothing can can fight back. It's a. Uh, it will help. Or it will hinder. And uh, yeah, it will hinder the effort of Dojo to transport a lot of resources out of this area at the beginning of the game. If we can sink or damage most of his cargo ships here now. So he had all... Uh, yeah. Here we try to interdict the enemy light cargo ship, but uh, we... The submarine commander simply say, no, it makes no sense. Uh, this ship is too cheap or whatever yeah. here's a Japanese troop transport ship hit by a torpedo and this is a mark 14 torpedo so uh, means this torpedo have a very low chance to hit and also a very low chance to explode but somehow in this case all the luck comes together and dojo make a hit And here our destroyers try to find, but it's deep water. Before April, you don't really have a good equipment for deep water. So we had some night ac action. Okay, this time looks like that our Submarine commander wanted to take this small cargo ship, but it used the only the deck gun, looks like. Yeah, so heavy fire, heavy damage, and I think this is uh, the end for this cargo ship. Yeah, we hear the sound, so we know 
but only one or two point ship so not really the big uh, and uh, something else just think uh, looks like not a Japanese ship okay from last time last time we had the same this uh, mine layer and the submarine try to hit each other but uh, never something happened again two torpedoes no hit uh, but the mine layer also cannot find us But it's really important for the Japanese in the first week to really try to capture the important bases for any future uh, strikes. So you, in the first week you, the Japanese really must risk more or less everything to be successful very quickly and fast. So it's a question only how many bases and which bases you want conquer first and maybe it's may yeah maybe the the balance between how many bases better or if you want try to sink or capture many bases with less force or only the really important four or five bases with a lot of forces to make sure that you are always successful yeah this is a i think a American destroyer, maybe already damaged by the bombardment in Manila. Will be normally no chance. We can maybe uh, we can watch how many shells it needs to finish this uh, one destroyer. So the first hit was already hit. The second shell hit. A 20 centimeter shell hit is normally often for a destroyer already uh, very critical. Now we have the second shell hit. And this is the end. So two destroyer shell hits is a uh, 5 inch and uh, two 8 inch shell hits from the heavy cruiser. And this is, I think, for every destroyer, simply too much. The destroyer have no armor protection at all. Uh, the armor of the destroyer is more or less the, the speed. Obviously, the destroyer try simply to avoid every shell. But uh, once the destroyer is hit and the engine already um, are damaged, so it means the speed will drop. Uh, so it's even more complicated for the destroyer to avoid any damage. So that is why a destroyer is a more or less a all or nothing. If a destroyer can avoid all damage, or if the first really, at, at, let's say, four, five inch, six inch shell hit, will already uh, be a real threat for any destroyer to survive the future engagement. So here is only some cargo ships, so nothing really. Two light cargo ships. But it's important, I would say, to clean up this uh, Sulu Sea or the Sea of uh, so West and South of the uh, Philippines and dominate this to make simply sure that the Allied player have the feeling or have the threat that he cannot really ship here anything more in the future so that he, the Allied don't try to bring additional supplies because many of the spaces in the Philippines at the beginning of the war they're undersupplied. They start already with undersupplyment. 
So normally for the Allied player it is important to bring a lot of supplies early on to the Philippines. But uh, if there are many Japanese destroyer and cruiser formations are operating in this area, it's simply very risky. And uh, with this tactic you maybe can already hinder all uh, all chances for the allies to um, somehow reinforce the Philippines. Because for the allies it's maybe more or less impossible to really win the war in the Philippines, but every week or every month the Philippines uh, are still uh, yeah, on fighting. The Japanese armies are bound to this and they are busy and occupied. So it means uh, if the fi armies fighting in the Philippines they normally cannot go to Australia or Caledonian and all of this stuff. And here we have now, uh, I think this is a three point patrol ship and two normal cargo ships. So maybe the firepower of um, one of these patrol ships is similar to these cargo ships. And uh, my ship simply is the only patrol ship. So uh, normally you don't, don't expect much from these patrol ships. Their really main purpose is to patrol something and to locate the enemy. Most of the time if they really locate any task force they will sink but you get the feedback and out of this other task forces or the air force can act and try to intercept the enemy. Yeah, one more cargo ship. Okay, here we have some bunch of Japanese destroyers and one light cruiser for the lead. I simply always do this that uh, at the beginning of the war because the setup is a very not my not the wish I would operate the unit. So at the beginning you must simply use what you have, but after one or two weeks you can start to reorganize your units. But in the first week it's really not possible to reorganize everything because you don't have the time for this. You must strike. You must use this one two weeks to simply take everything what you can get in a surprise. And uh, normally I will always see two lead ships, like two light cruisers, two heavy cruisers or two battleships. And then always at at least four but not much more than six destroyers to support this unit. And if you want then you double this, means then you say four light cruisers, four heavy cruisers, or four battleships. And then maybe also eight destroyers. Uh, at least you normally, normally I would always say two destroyers support one big uh, main ship. This is uh, the balance of power I would use. The main purpose of a destroyer is normally anti-submarine air uh, warfare in the beginning of the war simply to make sure if there are enemy uh, submarines that you try to intercept them or make a counter strike like this and uh, for the night fights the Japanese destroyers are also nice for torpedo attacks because you have this long range torpedoes um, the problem is with the long range torpedoes if you attack on 10,000 yards that you really hit something the chance is maximum 5% normally you must come close to 5, 6,000, 3,000 best is 2,000 yards then you have a very high chance to hit something uh, so in the night engagement this is possible in daytime the task forces normally try to uh, keep a distance between 5 and 15,000 yards it's more the nature of a navy battle and uh, uh but the, the destroyers simply they i think they 
there is a check in the manual you can read it they say you must have at least one support ship for every main ship so one destroyer for one heavy cruiser or a heavy battleship or car, uh, carrier is, a, is a, I think the minimum that every unit can use the uh, abilities with 100% and I would simply say better have two destroyers uh, they are not tough they, they are, their surface guns are not very strong but uh, they help a lot for sinking cargo ships or finish off ships and uh, if you fight enemy heavy units like we saw uh, even a destroyer can sometimes dis kill enemy heavy cruisers especially for the Japanese at night uh, here we see this is uh, we outgun this task force completely so let's lose this So we not so we only get one shell hit on the light cruiser and the light cruiser is simply normally uh, not immune against destroyer fire but uh, can handle it. So the light cruisers are normally the best to kill a destroyer. And the heavy cruiser is normally the best to kill a light cruiser. And so on and so on. A battleship will kill normally the heavy cruiser. And the carrier kill a battleship. So in this case, this destroyer is in, on heavy fire, so it means even if he can escape, uh, he will burn down over time. Because he need normally a port to escape. And we control the sea, we control the air. Here we find the enemy cargo ship. And we get uh, some torpedoes in. And no... Uh, no escort. So this is also uh, if you can at the beginning Dojo now he use a lot of small task forces to move with. He try to move everything what he have as soon as possible and he sacrifice more or less the protection. And uh, later we will see that he changes uh, uh, supply chain management so he simply say I, he don't want more every ship immediately he bunch up ships and he better he use only big um, convoys with a lot of escort and uh, this is simply the best way to avoid uh, submarine attack uh, now without escort our submarines are much um, more eager to attack and they have much better chance to sink the ship So this cargo ship just go down. So scouting, scouting, scouting. Also, you can see that here is now a lot of uh, every type of scout plane I use. Of course, at the beginning, the cruisers they have, uh, I think there are five or six different scout planes for the Japanese. But uh, I try really as soon as possible to ramp up the production of the Jack scout plane. And later, I really try, uh, latest after two or three months, I really want on every battleship, on every cruiser, this Jack scout plane, simply because uh, they have more range. And uh, range is, I think, for a scout plane, very important. And the game simply only simulate uh, slots. So the game tell you a battleship have three slots for a scout plane. There is no difference in size of a scout plane. So there, this a scout plane is a scout plane, uh, or patrol scout plane or whatever they call it, means a one engine, uh, ready to board on a cruiser or battleship. And if the game simply only calculates the slots, then I would use the best 
scout plane and the best scout plane is simply a scout plane with the uh, biggest range longest range to cover more area to inform the captain or admiral of the task force uh, where is the enemy okay now we can see that we bring already so we bring our fighters from Takao from south of Taiwan already to San Fernando and in San Fernando is the air HQ so these fighters have the local air HQ and now they're operating on the short range not more the long drop tank range so if this fighters gets now damaged they have a they must only one two three hex check to return and uh, this is already a, a big advantage to lower the losses, the operational losses. This have nothing really to do I think with the dogfight abilities because uh, the dogfight abilities will maybe not change but simply if your airplanes get damaged or then uh, and if they must return 11 hex or now only 3 or 4 hex there's simply a much lower chance to get a critical failure and lose your airplane in the pilot and also we control now these two hexes this I'm not for sure but normally so far I know is every hex to return to the base there is a check and I don't know if uh, maybe there's a failure on the way and it's in our control like if the failure is here maybe the pilot will jump out of the airplane and then it's only wounded because we control the hex or if they simply I'm not so sure if this really the game will simulate this so detailed uh, information but uh, so far I know if you uh, if you fight at least next to the hex uh, maybe we fight here and if we control one of these two hexes and the pilots often also can return uh, but uh, anyway you cannot really change it it's a uh, I think the most important is that you don't have this long range you have short range and uh, you don't burn so many supplies you I think you will not have so many operational losses and it's also normally important to have the air HQ nearby and the fighters to simply also cover your your, your fleet because normally here B-17 bombers and other stuff so the allied player normally can always try to attack in uh, this fleet units and uh, if you have a HQ here nearby and then say cap of 3 or 4 then it's uh, you have a much higher possibility to intercept this bomber formations Yeah, the P-40E is normally a good airplane, but I like, like I said before, uh, the original setup, the Allied player must more or less shift here a lot of pilots. Uh, so far I know there are some squadron with good pilots, but old airplanes. And there are some good airplanes like the P-40E with bad pilots. So. I think uh, you normally must uh, more or less unload all your pilots first back to the pool and then you must pick your good airframes like P-40E and uh, add the good pilots and the not so good well trained pilots maybe uh, mm, maybe you don't use them at all and send them and keep them in your backup pool and maybe add them to Australia somewhere or west coast of America and uh, let them train up or you add this sh shitty pilots to shitty airframes but this is micromanagement this can also be possible for the Japanese not everything is really perfect for the Japanese of course the zero fighters are normally all elite uh, but you have many other army pilots they are often only just so 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 
if you really want to minimize your losses and maximize your uh, kill ratio then you better check your units get a feeling for it and uh, make sure that they have a air hq nearby in command range that they are not tired that uh, they are open their um, their combat mission makes sense uh, because at the beginning of the war like now we change the location so you must not only change look the base of the air fighter you must maybe also change uh, where you want fly in, in which altitude you want maybe fly in. if you want make a all with if you want to attack with every airplane or only 50 percent and 50 percent you keep for cap i I simply only think, but this is my feeling, it is better for a unit to have one purpose and not mix it too much. But the problem is that it's uh, afford more micromanagement, but often I like one squadron makes a sweep and one squadron will make cap. But and especially for cap it's often happened if you have like you have three squadrons and you tell every squadron 30 percent cap 30 percent 30 percent rest and 30 percent uh, sweep something like this then you have three times a sweep but every time it's only 30 percent of the unit so you come often with only small amount of numbers of airplanes this can have some benefits but to simply break the resistance, it's maybe it's a better at the beginning to come with one strong wing and simply dominate the sky. But it's up to the situation. Okay. I think we saw that we killed I don't know, many enemy pilots already. Not more much left. Let's speed this up now because there's more coming, I think. And it was near the end. We can see we come with 32. And uh, normally Dojo also has the Malambas, so he had uh, 27. 32 against 27 is not so outnumbered, but uh, we. We kill many of his pilots. I mean, you can never kill all uh, because many simply can return to base, but are damaged. And uh, at the beginning, I think it's important to kill this uh, P-40E. If you can get rid of them, they are the biggest threat against the Japanese bomber formation and also for the fighters. So Dojo still use some B-17 to attack Taiwan, but uh, I bring all my uh, Air Force normally, the fighters and Navy bombers I bring to to the Philippines I think and I bring Army forces to help in China. I don't really keep here much cap in Taiwan, so I, I simply ignore this. I say I make cap for my fleet here and I strike here in China but I don't defend Formosa because there's not much he can really destroy here. He he damage a little here, he can if you're lucky he maybe hit some if you make a really lucky hit he destroy maybe some airplane at the ground but uh, there are not so many bombers, not so many B seventeens. And so and every day he keeps the B seventeens longer in the Philippines they are under the threat that the Japanese, that means that my forces can destroy his bombers on the ground. And I think the B-17s are one of the best tools for the Americans for hinder and hurt the Japanese uh, air force later on. Because with the B-17 you can normally always attack airfield with a high chance of success. Okay, bombardment in China.
So we also start now with Malaya to pin down the enemy forces that they simply cannot uh, escape fast enough to to Singapore. The main operation in Malaya is more or less to slow down the Malayan forces in the north so that they cannot link up with the fortress of Singapore. That we can split them and have later an easy fight in Singapore. If the Allied player can recall all, all his forces from north of Malaya and bring everything to Singapore and then he maybe can hold Singapore much longer. It's for the Japanese more really important to cut off these forces. Okay. Uh, deep water, no chance. Hit, but no explosion. Oh, uh, the second topic. And me go. So the first time lucky, the second time uh, he found us. But uh, not heavy damage, not heavy fire, so maybe it's still possible to bring back the ship to port. So the first uh, engagement in China In China I would simply say uh, but it's very dependent and related to the action of the ally player is if it's possible for yeah, if, the po if the Japanese can more or less control this base and this uh, crossroads and maybe also this base and go down the source and take the uh, Kukong and these bases, then I mean, if it's really possible for the Japanese to hold all these lines, then no supplies can fly more from the center of China to the east coast, and then this east coast will normally starve out. Here we can see four destroyed units, the rest only disabled, and there are many destroyed over the allies. So, the beginning of the success in China. And this is now our shock attack on Hong Kong. And you can see we have here one full division and here a second full division and the rest is uh, the, these are pioneers. So they are specially for breaking enemy forts and some artillery. And the artillery is okay in open field and if there is no enemy fort installation but in this kind of a city attack most of the artillery will not really uh, support so much. So we can see here also that the, the engineers, normally you must call them pioneers, but this game only no engineers, so the engineers before the fight starts already blow up one fort and uh, then we attack, we have three to one and then we blow up the next fort, the double fort. And out of this we can see that we suffer nearly nothing, nearly no one, not, this little is obviously destroyed, the, the, 
The engine is simply because they go in first and blow up something, they really suffer always. They are not really dead, but they are all uh, disabled. So they can only do this once or maximum twice, and then they are burnt out. And you often must check your engineer squadrons or pioneer units, because if they are disabled, then simply better let them rest. Don't use them more. Let them rest, and then for the next attack. Their job is really mainly blow up forts here. This alone will save a lot of manpower already. If you can blow up level 3 or level 4 fort and reduce it one level or two levels, then this is like a, a whole division support you. And we can see that uh, we don't really crash them, but uh, we starting to lower the resistance. Most important is that the enemy fortification is already down to zero. Maybe it's jump back to a one, but the level one fort is not really helpful. Okay. And we can also see that we we try immediately to push this direction down the street to yeah, pressure non-stop and take the arm. Because along the, uh, the big strategy is take Xi'an, take Nanyang, and all these units are trapped. And here again, nearly no destroyed, and already the Chinese starting to crumble. So, attack of Miri. Also, there is only super small base forces, like a post office. I don't think that they really can fight. Some guys manage something here. Pushing. Also no problem. Sing Kavang. I don't... This is normally... Uh, the base is only good, or the main purpose for this base is there's an airport, I think a level 3 or level 4 airport. And with this airport you simply can uh, control all the sea here nearby. You can also bring here zero fighters, and the zero fighters they can normally, they can sweep Singapore, Pali, Bambang, uh, Palembang and uh, Batavia. Uh, I think with drop tanks you can even fly here. So, you need the fighters to simply control the airspace. And with Navy long range bombers, you can also try to hinder any sh uh, ship movement of uh, the Allied player. But if you want to have the torpedoes, you need also an air HQ here. And uh, we all, here's an air base, so we destroy this air force on the, already on the ground. So there is none now here, no air base and no scouting planes for Dojo more to see what is coming. Means if we kill this scouting air base uh, we can bring our ships from the east side uh, to Mersing more easy without uh, that we get early detection so a, a successful landing operation in Mersing is more possible I mean still the Singapore air base is here but they have uh, less reaction time This is only empty base, it's nothing. So, the American or the, the Allied submarines was more or less successful, but our submarines was also successful. Our uh, fighters kill many enemy fighters and uh, our bombardment in China starts and the first battles in China start to clean up the... Uh, the... Yeah. The enemy forces. So no setback. Maybe that we don't take uh, Hong Kong in the first strike. You can say this is maybe not. It. But to take Hong Kong in the first battle is it possible. But this is then by luck. If you have the lucky 10% then you get Hong Kong in the first battle. But normally we, would take, we will see if we can take it now in the second day of the turn. Uh, but if you also take Hong Kong after the third battle, then it's maybe still okay. Here we can see that we now lose some points because we empty the city. 
Uh, but uh, at one point, it's nothing. I don't care. And then we can really see this is coming from Hong Kong down. This is the submarines coming out of Manila. And maybe some other forces here. So at the beginning, this will be a very crowded area. So it is important to bring some air force already to north of Manila and simply uh, support your navy units. The real problem is the Japanese have simply no airplane and no navy unit to really deal with the enemy submarines. This is why I focus so heavily on this attack on Manila to simply try to damage or sink as many possible as many submarines as possible it was once they leave the port it's really uh, a tire for very long uh, turn by turn ongoing battle with the submarines if you're lucky you can damage them a little stronger but most of the time you hit, hit them a little they're running out of torpedoes they're going back after one week you have them uh, again in your shipping line So it's two more cargo ships, more or less dead. One small Dutch cargo ship, only one shell hit. Okay. A British destroyer. Normally the and a, a troop transport ship. So this British submarines they really have the ability to sink easily enemy submarines in shallow water. Uh, but in this case I think this destroyer was mainly yeah um, locked to this troop transport ship. So he will maybe not go with everything on the submarine. He, he, its main purpose is uh, to defend the cargo ship. Okay, other Dutch cargo ship. That one is now dead. A little, yeah, sinking. Ah. So again, some Japanese destroyers and torpedo boats and some Allied cargo shipping. The torpedo boats of the Japanese are li like uh, light destroyers. And at the beginning, I mean they have torpedoes. Yeah, okay. Uh, but they have nothing else. But... If you can keep and let them survive up to, I don't know what, I think it's summer of 42, June, August, something like this. Then you can rebuild the ships to escort ships. Then they have a very strong anti-submarine battery and they also have a strong anti-aircraft uh, abilities. So and these escort ships are really the best ships because they are simply cheap and they are they have they make their escort ships so their main purpose is really to escort cargo ships tanker and they can handle everything like a like submarine attack and they can also provide at least some anti-aircraft firepower and so so long there's no any ca enemy carrier coming or a battleship fleet or a heavy cruiser fleet i mean even a destroyer is uh, an escort ship cannot battle but uh everything what is air attack and submarine attack this escort ships normally can handle at least and this means this escort ships they are too slow to operate in a real battle line so use destroyers for to support your heavy cruisers, your battleships, your your carriers, not for escort duty. For escort duty, I would really, really say use escort ships. 
and destroyer uh, torpedo boats are simply later your escort ship so don't waste them they look at the beginning of the war they have really not a they're very useful abilities but you can change them also some of the japanese light cruisers they are normally not so useful but uh, you can rebuild them to anti-aircraft cruisers and after that you can really add them to battleships or uh, carrier units and then they provide a lot of anti-aircraft fire Okay, more ships are done. And again, uh, burning destroyer. I mean, not really burning, but it looks like they. Something is not so fine with this ship. And we see that uh, I think this is a American destroyer. At least they had one hit. But it's a 4 inch gun. So the 4 inch gun is simply not enough to really hurt any light cruiser. A light cruiser don't have really much damage uh, protection but uh, a 4 inch is simply not strong enough. And we, now we can really see the destroyer already burning. And I think soon it's over. Yeah. So we get this one shell hit without really big damage and uh, we get a torpedo inside the destroyer and then it was over. And the uh, tanker. Every tanker, every big cargo ship you can sink here. Later the allied player cannot use more to bring out oil or fuel out of uh, Java and uh, Sumatra. Uh, this is a patrol craft of Dojo. One point ship I think. One shell hit, one kill. Two more of uh, maybe these are local minesweepers or yeah, AMs. Okay, they're not local, but uh, they're mine layers. And one is dead, and the one is burning, but. Will it survive the day? Ah yeah, okay, we catch up already. So, we we just found this ship again and then it sunk automatically because there was simply damage over time because the ship was burning or flooding. One more cargo ship. One more dead ship. And two more. But only light colors. And one more. And there is not really much here in this area the allies can really mm, throw against the Japanese. In total maybe... I mean the most important is normally get rid of the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, the two heavy units. 
and the Dutch, I think they have one heavy cruiser and three or four light cruisers. And the Americans, I think, also have one heavy cruiser and one light cruiser or something nearby. So, in best case, I think the Allied forces in the first week can get two heavy cruisers and maximum four light cruisers together. This is the maximum what they can get together in the first week. Uh, so, you normally, you don't must... Or the Japanese player don't must uh, worry too much the enemy fleet. But uh, I always will worry if there's enemy torpedo bombers. British torpedo bombers... Uh, uh, somehow they even can cripple top of the art German battleships. Somehow. Okay, so the night was long and uh, bloody, but uh, this is a must case more or less, the Japanese must have this success in the beginning, because the uh, industry of the Americans are simply far too strong. If you not have the advantage now and cripple everything, you the American will not outlast you in 43 and they will outlast you already in mid of 42. It means even less time to be successful. And if the Japanese normally don't get the, the auto victory in 43, I think then it's over for the Japanese. I don't think that the Japanese really have an auto victory in 44. I, I mean, it, it's possible, but I don't believe that the, this will happen. Yeah. The radar technology, the airplane technology, the amount of ships for the Allies are increasing so quickly in mid of 43. Okay. And more. And there's our patrol ship. Intercepted. I think this is more or less a bigger cargo ship, maybe 11 point cargo ship. But I think they will really not fight each other much. So here we won't get a shell hit and then they say okay bye bye. Okay, then they come again. And this time we get uh, two shell hits on this cargo ship. A cargo ship is a cargo ship and not a fighting force. But our patrol ship is normally to fight, of course with uh, very handicapped abilities. So this part, patrol ship um, uh, really follow his duty, simply uh, boza and uh, keeps his cargo ships busy and forces cargo ships to return and uh, not a straight go source. Uh, we simply interdict this unit and it must change the course. So our heavy units are more likely to catch up and sink them. Okay, one more thing, uh, destroyer. Hello, hello, are you fighting opponents of the Pacific? This is your favorite enemy, Orphan Annie, at Radio Tokyo. With music to lift your spirit and words to depress your morale. But first, Imperial General Headquarters announced today that... The Imperial Navy has achieved another great victory near Balikpapa with the sinking of two carriers, a battleship, and numerous cruisers and destroyers. So Tokyo Rose just informed us that uh, we sunk a lot of stuff. So 
I mean, this is part of the war propaganda and uh, if we believe everything, I don't know, this war game of also a lot of folk of war, but maybe this destroyer was a battleship, who knows. Okay, this submarine was not so successful. Now our submarine in the port of Nomea found something else, not always is a local mine layer or mine layer. Now we I think more or less destroy this like cargo ship. Yeah. The cargo ship go down and this other cargo ship also is uh, The Japanese torpedoes are simply the long-range torpedo, but also I think the normal. The Japanese have also different kind of torpedoes. They have the old class torpedoes and uh, this long-range torpedo. And the long-range torpedo not only have the long range. They also have, a, I think, I think fifty percent more firepower or damage power than the American Mark Fourteen torpedoes. So even if the Mark Fourteen torpedoes hit something. They not really do so much damage, but at the same time, the Americans they have the better damage control system, so they can handle more damage and survive. The Japanese, same, the tendency that the damage control breaks down is much higher. Uh, so the Japanese uh, torpedoes can do more damage, but the American handle the damage better. And the Japanese, they, yeah, they simply try not to get the hit on their own ships too much. So in these early days, there's still a lot of uh, ally air activity in the area of Manila. This is also why you need this cap to normally try to shut down the enemy scout planes. That uh, the ally player, the dojo in this case, simply have less information about this situation. That he more and more must guess what is the situation, and not know what is the situation. And for the Japanese or every player, I would simply say, don't guess, you must know. And you can know if you prepare well. So here we can see also the super long range attack on Saigon. Uh, but uh, without really big uh, impact. Let him try if he want. We can see that there's no ally fighter so far in China active and I would say uh, I don't know I mean I really I never played the ally player but uh, if it's possible for the ally player to get early on uh, the flying tigers into China I would maybe go for this. Uh, the Japanese player need to, uh, some time to organize his air forces to get additional air forces out of Manchukuo, and there is also not so many good airframes for the Japanese in the first four weeks. So if you can get this uh, P-40 fighters, then I think you can really battle the Japanese air force, at least for the first two three months. But it's 
it's a question if you want use your flying targets for China or if you use them for to defend Rangoon. In this match, Dojo simply prefer to defend his airspace and not normally to attack much. So he gave me in this, yeah, he let me simply run the missions. Maybe at that time, Dojo also not really fully understand uh, the purpose of my attacks in the greater context. And uh, if you watch the later episodes, you will understand uh, what a dire situation the whole uh, Chinese army is now, and why it's happened. Just the ship sunk, but not a Japanese ship, of course. I also will not or cannot say much about uh, the possibilities of the American hmm, main carrier fleet, uh, how they can best act. Here we see just a scout plane of our cruisers uh, make a hit on a cargo ship, but most of this uh, this uh, patrol planes they carry only like 20 kilo or 30 kilo bomb. So even if they hit this ship, if most lucky you can start a fire, but the damage will be very small. But a fire can always be more critical. But we can also see that uh, this uh, this uh, scout planes are slow, and if there's enemy cap fighters, they often really get killed. Uh, but this is uh, not not easy to avoid. So if you bring your battleships and cruiser formations back to port. Always check if there are maybe yeah, open slots for some scout planes and then reinforce the unit. And also make sure that the pilots are not tired, give additional pilots and train them well before you really use them. Because for, my, for me it is useless to send a pilot without training to a mission and then you will know you will get maybe wrong information or not very reliable information often you maybe lose the pilots because they don't know how to fly the airplane and if you encounter some enemy fighters and you have even less chance to survive this yeah, and here we can see that uh, our torpedo bombers they find something but uh, from Clark Field is two hexes away there's still some Still some cap fighters in the air, so a little unlucky for us. We were still not able to completely break the enemy fighter formation. And our poor Betty's they are simply too slow. Uh, even if this is only a 40B, but the 40B have already uh, enough firepower. The P40, I don't care this P43 so much, but this 8 P-40s are really a killer for the battles. But at least we get half squadron. That is only a shitty uh, cargo ship. Uh, but we get a torpedo. I know only one torpedo. I think one port torpedo is for this kind, or even two torpedoes are enough for this kind of cargo ship. So. 
Yeah, we can see. We sink this. But then the fighters come again and again we lost uh, nearly all of our bombers here. So this was really the the big uh, mm, failure of today. But uh, it's hard to really. This is a. Uh, it's hard to really to avoid this. Uh, uh, what I would say, or what I maybe would do next time, is simply mm, try everything to to bring here every fighter to north of Manila and try to really uh, get rid of this uh, enemy fighter cap as soon as possible with everything what you have, even more aggressive. I did now. I think in this case I have two f big zero fighter squadrons and one is on rest and one is on sweep. Or I think one is on cap and one is on sweep. Uh, so of course uh, uh, I simply like it more to sweep enemy bases to and to force the enemy in the battle. And not to have so much cap. Cap is of course also important but cap only works if the enemy is coming and in this case we are coming but we have no escort of course you can make escort uh, so this will never be perfect and in this case we was lucky in the first day but in the second day they they simply can intercept our bombers and the game simply the game also we don't have an option for this uh, you cannot say don't attack ships in the range of three of the space and only attack more far away. This is uh, there are simply there's simply some limitations for this control of this game. But uh, it is pity we lost eight elite pilots and airframes, but it's not completely to avoid. And nothing will be ever always perfect we also lost some really good uh, uh, troop transport ships at the beginning unluckily against uh, coastal guns it was also simply unlucky we can attack 10 times and 10 times nothing happened but this one time whoosh one two hits to start fire burn down and that is the ship Some bombers. Uh, we can see this is a sweep now in Manila. So I sweep Manila and not Clark Field. Normally I would maybe say only sweep Clark Field. Uh, at least we can now ask our Zero fighters to get a revenge on this uh, American fighters and kill them all from behind. Like a good Japanese pilot, always attack from behind. Because this is skillful. It's uh, maybe not the way of a samurai, but uh, it's the way to get a kill. Okay. Two damage. One kill. Maybe one more. Okay, no kill, but then. Okay, so we have uh, the airbase in Kuantan also with the air HQ to simply 
organize the fighters better, let them recover fatigue much better. And you can see there is here now the the Oscar 1A with the same firepower like the Key 27B. Both only have two light machine guns, so they simply normally do need no damage. But we have at least some one Bs and some zeros. And uh, these two airplanes maybe not really can damage much, much the enemy, but uh, they they can get experience. And later you get you can give these pilots better airframes, and then they also can kill the enemy. But uh, we come maybe maybe they coming close they coming deep with six thousand and maybe our cap was a little too high so Ah, uh, sometimes you can inter intercept better, sometimes not. It is still be coming from uh, this is a the cap is from the base, so you must first get the information that the enemy is coming. Then you must prepare your, and then you must inform your fighters, and then they fly to the, uh, to the fleet. And this uh, needs time, so there's less time to intercept the enemy air formation. Okay, this time is no cap more, so our bombers can uh, avoid any interception and uh, make a clean attack. And this is also what I said before: if the bomber formation gets attacked, the efficiency will drop. And in this case, there was no attack, so this fighter pilots can come in the perfect attack formation, and then. It's depending of course uh, what you attack in this case they are slow cargo, sh cargo ships so no chance kill three torpedo hits no problem for them Okay, now the dojo try to attack the base directly, so our cap is uh, nearby. Means we have maybe more time to intercept. But we have no zeros here. So in this case we have less firepower. But we can maybe still uh, uh, defend the base and force the enemy to return. The British Air Force in Malaya also simply the Buffalo is a uh, uh, yeah. the Buffalo is I think similar to the uh, Oscar 1B it is not really good I would not say it is totally shitty like the 1A or the Nate because they simply have no firepower this uh, Buffalo have at least some firepower but it is uh, no match against everything Better, so the Oscar 1C or the Zero can kill this Buffalo really easy. But uh, it's also the combination of the fighter pilot training and experience. So most of these British pilots are simply they they have only basic training, and uh, they normally one month in training school to be ready for war. And uh, what you want to do with the British Air Force? You can try to hold them back in Singapore and wait every day and uh, let simply the Japanese take everything and at the same time you only make training, training, training. It's a possibility and only try to defend Singapore and then you, or you simply also say no or you, you give up all of Singapore air war and bring everything what is possible out of Singapore and maybe try to defend Sumatra better. I don't know. 
I only can say, I think use this formations to attack the Japanese in their own bases is maybe not so the success. Yeah, the enemy attack is... I mean, we cannot really kill them, but we can force them to return. Here we intercept three bombers without any escort. I think we can, but uh, we come too late. Uh, we kill two on the don't come back. Okay, and this is normally the super. I would say the most terrible or the most, the biggest threat of all Japanese shipping is this wildebeest and this watch fish top. Pedo bombers. I mean, the airplane itself is slow and has no hit points and is easy to kill, but they simply carry these damn torpedoes and then, like I said, ah, they have punching power. It's similar to the Betty's. The Japanese battery uh, torpedo bombers are very similar. Slow, low hit points, no ability to really defend themselves. It's only that the wildebeest in this ward, they have simply only a range of 5 or 6 and the betty have 15, 17. So the range is totally different, but uh, the, what they can do is the same. These airplanes also, they can kill every ship in the sea or damage at least very quickly. In, yeah. But once you have uh, the fighters intercept them, then they are dying easily. Dying like flies here. But it's simply we have now the disadvantage that uh, we have no radar. So our our fighters simply often come too late to really get in a good position for interceptor. We have only only very short time to to attack before they start the attack run. But this short engagement already lowers the hit chance for this uh, torpedo bombers. And they may be also out of normal range and they use extended range so they use only bombs and not torpedoes. Uh, this is this super shitty light bombers. I don't know. I think they carry only 100 kilo bomb or something. And they hit nothing. So we kill one on the way and they carry uh, yeah, two 400 pounds, so two for 50 kilo bombs. So even if you hit with a 100 pound. And it's not a cargo ship. I think the effect will be nothing. One hundred pounds is cargo ships. You can attack with it, but nothing else. And even if you hit the cargo ship with this, you must uh, be lucky and start a fire. So this was the air war. Oh, yeah. This was the uh, Chinese force we kicked the first day to clear to open the railway and now we must get rid of it. Yeah. So now we kick it out of this railway, so the railway from Shanghai to Beijing is open. So you can get now from Manchukuo all units down here in this area very quickly if you want bring them to Shanghai and if you want try to get these cities you can bring from Manchukuo your units here down or if you want bring from Shanghai your forces here to this area. It's important to get this uh, railway open, also to let the supplies uh, flow easy but make sure that you also take this space because this space is still under uh, allied control at the start and uh, 
so this your city Kefeng is still uh, you and if he is a unit I think now it's open because you can get the supplies like this direction but if he has ally forces so it's simply important to take this base so you can shift more units more easily yeah so no real battle so this is now the second battle of Hong Kong So at the end uh, we was very successful I would say because uh, firstly we destroy the enemy air force on the ground and we suffer nearly no losses only disabled and uh, it is one turn two days but one turn and uh, you can see that or there was already no fort so we attack and because we killed last time all the forts and uh, it was a clean cut through the enemy lines and everything is destroyed and uh, I think this is important and you need Hong Kong you must repair the port of Hong Kong and then uh, because there's a shipyard and you can rearm the battleships there Saigon is not deep enough you cannot bring everything only maximum heavy cruisers you can bring in the harbor of Saigon but uh, no battleships and uh, before you bring all your battleships back to to Japan to rearm them I would simply say better use Hong Kong I use Hong Kong a lot at the beginning of the war for the first months to rearm and repair and maintenance my battleship units heavy cruisers I let normally operate off of Saigon it's more near to Sa Singapore so okay so now we are December 13th and uh, first we can check the statistic and we can see that 25 to 14 kills but we kill a lot of units on the ground so Hong Kong but also I think some other bases we took over and uh, mainly we lost our betties so this is of course pitily like in the last turn uh, in the last turn it was really a failure maybe you can say you don't let them fly out in this turn and you say only turn one attack and then you wait two three turns to simply use your fighter force to get rid of all enemy fighters if you want to make sure that your bomber losses are uh, as small as possible but you will never really avoid this completely we can also see that we kill uh, his fighters and we lost only two zeros by operational losses and uh, one oscar one yeah. so we lost nearly no fighters but we kill a lot of his bombers so this is light bombers this is a light bomb or medium bomber Torpedo bomber, medium bomber, small fighter, more fighters. So in all, total we can still see we kill 57 to 22. So the, the kill ratio is good. It's simply only, if you would say now here, we lost 34 Nell torpedo bomber and 23 Betty torpedo bomber. So they are all long range based. So we lost Wait, wait, 23 and 30, so 50, uh, 50 to 60 long range bombers, no, navy bombers. Yeah, they are really good if they don't get intercepted. Yeah. And uh, blah, 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 blah. we have still no ace. Yeah. So we can also see we, we lost some pilots, one wounded. And some are mission missing in action 
and uh, ship sense is last turn for the Japanese lost nothing and the allies lost oops so two good tankers three four five yeah I would say simply up to seven maybe so normally a case uh, this is a better a case like you can see here, this is a 6,000 ton AK. This is a 4,500 ton AK. And this has a smaller AK with only uh, 2,500 to 3,000 tons. But we also get rid of uh, the British uh, destroyers and the British destroyers. Uh, this is not, uh, this is as a old T class destroyer. So they have no really good sub hunter. Ability. This is sim This is the same ability the Japanese have now. Uh, yeah, it's the same. And the Americans they also have uh, not really good. The Americans have many of these shitty destroyers at the start, and later get upgrade. The British have some of these shitty destroyers, but have already most of the destroyers um, with much better anti-aircraft abilities, radar. So, no, this is simply this, this Hong Kong Harbor Defense Force. Of course, the British don't invest much in Hong Kong because this is normally only a trade harbor, not a military harbor. Yeah, we can also see that we kill a lot of uh, British, Dutch, Philippines, uh, small cargo ships. So, the military. From the military point of view, this was not, not really so important because the three shitty destroyers are not matters. But we kill, if you only see this cargo and the tankers, then this was not so bad. Yeah, and most important is for the army, we take Hong Kong. The only problem is there's now damage, so we must repair this. So one or two turns and then this is done. And uh, then you can better bring, and then I will bring my forces I think back. And then I start to normally drive north east to take these two bases. Because my main purpose is normally make here, uh, in, uh, to block all this, keep me, uh, yeah, the owner of these bases to kill all these forces before they can uh, retreat to Changsha and uh, support in the main defense line of the Chinese. Yeah. And you can see here we had here this uh, battle so we're driving here already and uh, uh, here I prepare the armies to also battle these units to start the uh, uh, the engagements of Nanyang sooner or later. And uh, you can also see that the, my, the garrison request of uh, Manchukuo is now very low. So 100 points is simply, I would say, the buffer. Never, I would never really risk it to go here under 8,000 only for 100 points. I would simply wait this, you know, increase again maybe to 850 or something. Then you can take something out again and again and again. Uh, and you can see here that uh, my landing force is starting now the walk on uh, Georgetown. We are already in a lower star, so next time we can take maybe a lower star. Maybe we must wait because here some forces still on the way. So they need maybe one or two turns more to arrive here. The road is uh, just so so. And uh, we also try here to. To get as soon as possible here in the center of Manila to trap these units, and uh, well, not here. I have here the base forces, or all these ships are ready here east of uh, Kuantang, and I think they will start now the landing of Manila of Mersing. I simply 
order all ships here in this location because uh, it's easy for air protection so anyway airstrike is uh, from uh, Singapore it's uh, far away for them uh, I can provide more air cover and it's uh, in one hex or in one f movement phase distance to Mersing so Normally we can arrive in Mersing and start the amphibious assault on Mersing before enemy airstrikes happen. Means in worst case we unload our units and then we have an airstrike and lose some ships. I still simply hope we unload, we can have a cap over Mersing and then if we attack we can maybe protect our ships or lose at least not too many units. Yeah, we also see here that uh, the additional landing of uh, the, the Japanese army starts here already. Maobang, we have here now already the first 500 fighting units or so at soul strength and more and more is coming here if 130 only. So this is only a block force and I, the big force is coming here from the east and walking because it's a fast road you can walk here very quickly and I also have here already 666 so the devil's number and uh, we're bringing still more forces here more forces here more forces here here is a cargo ship gets a mark 14 torpedo hit so we can see this in fire it is critical i mean it would not survive this for a long time but we are very close to takao so normally the ship will arrive support then this must go to maybe for one month or even more to the shipyard repair and then it's back online yeah okie dokie i think we took here the basis and uh, only to explain this again, this is the start, it's nothing gets damaged. Miri starts with 150 to 150, so Dojo never really starts a repair here. Why, why, he, why would he? And uh, you also need here the supplies. So to fix Miri you need to bring here a lot of supplies. And you must also well, try to at least get this to a port 3 firstly to have uh, the ability that uh, no submarines submarines can attack the ships more in the port and you need the capacity to later carry all this oil out yeah we have still here a lot of task forces and we we only running here a little low on uh, oil fuel because we had full speed to we try to intercept and uh, I must see how I manage this. If I can intercept more of this. I still have here also some submarines to maybe blockade here. There. It's an easy way to return to port. And uh, yeah. Only some task forces, I think they're running here around to check. And the carrier fleet is now here. So we are more back now in the area of the Japanese controlled airspace. So, but uh, we still must go back to truck, need maybe one or two turns more, then we can rearm and truck, then we are ready for the next uh, strike. Guam I ignore because it's not important for me now. I have other things to do. And uh, still you must organize a lot of stuff in Japan. Still many units are ready to go. We have here still forces uh, like... Uh, this unit is also part of the 16th army, this is artillery. There's still a lot of stuff in Japan normally belongs to this armies fighting already in Philippines or Malaya. Good. I think this is enough for us today.
see you again with the next turn bye bye